so I have just had the most fascinating visit with a winemaker who is really uh, a romantic figure, a rebel, a poet. I uh, have just been talking to Christos Vasiliadis of uh, Vasiliadis Ekfrasis Winery. The man has a vision. He believes in his terror and with good reason. He has some of the highest vineyards in the whole of Europe. He's determined to put Cyprus on the map. He's not going to accept the comfort of the indigenous variety making him distinct. He wants to go for international varieties and prove that the terroir in Cyprus can uh, show off international varieties such as Sauvignon Blanc, such as Pinot Noir and meet international wines as an equal and excel and do better. The Vasiliadis Akfrasis Winery is located on the Pizzilia wine route in the Limassol region of Cyprus. It is based in Candria village, 1200 meters above sea level. Candria is the second highest village on this mountain and has a permanent population of only 220 people. Imagine my surprise to be invited to this sleepy little village to chat about one of the newest wine projects on the island. The first thing that struck me when I met Christos Vasiliadis was his intensity. Words were pouring out of him in torrents and every statement was a definite, uncompromising pronouncement. Yet I liked him instantly. There's a vulnerability behind the bravado. He is proud, he is knowledgeable, and he is passionate about wine and elegant winemaking. The physical isolation that the rugged terror of the Mothery Hills has imposed on Christos comes at a price. Christos is completely out of sync with every other winemaker on the island. His vineyards are so high up that harvest time for him comes many weeks after everybody else has moved to vinification. In fact, his highest vineyard isn't ready for harvest till December. His nervous energy was contagious. Rather than immediately proceed with the tasting of his wines, we abandoned the tasting room and took our discussion outside. When we stepped outside, Christos pointed at the wall behind the tasting room and asked, Do you see that? Do I see what? He explained. The Trotos mountain range is composed entirely of oceanic crust that was pushed up when the African and Eurasian tectonic plates collided millions of years ago. The rocks you used to build the wall he was pointing at were once at the bottom of this prehistoric ocean. In fact, it is no exaggeration to say that the higher one climbs on Trotos mountains, the deeper into the primordial ocean one dives with marine fossils testifying to that effect. And this is the ground all of Christos's vines have to battle with for nutrients. And why should you care, you ask? One word, terroir. Terroir refers to the natural environment in which a wine is produced. It includes factors such as the soil, the climate and the elevation. Drawing nutrients from a rocky soil that used to be buried at the bottom of an ancient ocean is unique enough, but the vineyards of the Vasiliavis Ekfrasis winery are also among some of the highest in Europe, if not the world. Christos's Sauvignon Blanc vineyard sits at a breathtaking 1400 meters above sea level. His Pinot Noir vines at 1300 meters above sea level. Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir are of course grape varieties commonly grown in France, not Cyprus. This was a specific choice by Christos Vasiliadis. The peak of Madari can be warm and bright, but is also beaten by rain, blanketed in snow and smothered in perpetual early morning fogs. Actually, does this sound like a French wine region to you? 
Mr. Vasiliadi selected grapes that matched the terroir rather than try to force indigenous varieties to brave the weather. Christos is also intimately aware of the microclimate of every vineyard he owns. Because of the variable geography of the Madari Hills, each vineyard is exposed to unique climatic conditions. Depending on its slope gradient, aspect and elevation, each vineyard enjoys a different exposure to wind, rainfall, humidity and frost. Mr. Vasiliadis takes all of these factors into account before making any decision specific to a particular vineyard. I was given some amazing facts. At this altitude, a hectare of vines will produce 300 kilos of grapes. For comparison, a hectare of vines in the valleys could produce eight times that amount. In fact, his best loved and highest plantation, inherited from his grandfather, sits at an altitude of 1500 meters. It is home to Xenisteri vines, so old and so distressed that they barely produce 80 kilos of grapes per hectare. We further discussed that these small yields mean that the five-star hotels and restaurants that eagerly stock his wines keep running out and he's not in a position to simply provide them with extra bottles. In theory, that just makes his wine more desirable, but the possibility that one of these venues might decide to no longer stock his wines because of his limited supply is a real danger and is never far from his thoughts. I experienced the frustration of these shortages firsthand. His Sauvignon Blanc and his Pinot Noir were available to sample in the tasting room, but no bottles were available for us to buy. Christos invited us to walk through his vineyards with him. This Handria village vineyard was also inherited from his grandfather. Watching him move through his goblet-shaped vines served to emphasize his connection to every plant. Every single job needs to be performed manually, including carrying harvesting baskets overflowing with grapes up and down the treacherous slopes. And Christos is indeed very hands-on in his approach. He pointed out to us that his grapes were at a far earlier stage of maturation compared to grapes in the sun-drenched valleys. The berries were smaller, the skins were thicker, even the leaves were tougher to the touch. The vineyard is densely and randomly planted with chest-high goblet vines. The thought of planting in neat rows so grape harvesters could drive through them never occurred to Christos's grandfather and it's not an option available to him either. We chatted for another 20 minutes amongst the fruit and then it was time to make our way back down the mountain. Wow, my ears popped. We've just descended 1200 meters in 90 minutes. We're back in Lanaka, we have brought two bottles from the winery and we have found a third Vasiliadis Ekfrasis bottle in a supermarket on the way. Yes, we tasted most of the labels in Candria earlier this afternoon, but I'm afraid the video footage is overexposed. It was 2 o'clock in the afternoon in July. Let's do that tasting again, shall we? This time in a situation where we can control the lighting a bit. We respect you tasters too much to show you bad footage. You need to see what we're so excited about. So we have three bottles of Vasiliadis and Francis dry wine. The Xenisteri white, the Mavro rosé, and the pale light-bodied Mavro red wine. All three of these labels are perfect summer wines. Let's taste them. The 2017 Vasiliadis and Francis Xenisteri is a 100% varietal bottle. On the nose, this wine is redolent with aromas of holiday jasmine, underripe pear, green apple, and new lemons. In the glass, this wine is crystal clear. It is the color of pale straw, and it looks as bright as it tastes. On the first sip, you will find it tastes of fresh parsley and grass, not like Wimbledon lawn, but the long grass that you crush under your feet when you walk through the fields of a mountain village. 
at 12.5% alcohol, it is light-bodied, but somehow still coats the tongue with its rich texture. This wine has a refreshing acidity and minerality, which makes it very food-friendly. As a pairing, I would recommend a prawn salad. It will love the dark leafy greens. This 2017 medium dry rosé by Vasiliadis is made entirely of Marlboro grapes. On the nose, this wine bursts with aromas of strawberries and cherries. In the glass, it shimmers like pink rhinestones, promising crystal coolness and freshness. On the first sip, the mild sweetness amplifies all the fruit, but there is plenty of acidity to balance everything out. I love the intriguing aftertaste of kirsch flavored bonbons. At 13% alcohol, this is a fuller bodied rosé than I anticipated. As a pairing, I would recommend a pasta salad with tangy goat cheese and aromatic sun-dried tomatoes. Finally, this Vasiliadis Mavro is not like any other Mavro that I have ever experienced. On the nose, it is overflowing with aromas of summer berries, violets and lilies. In the glass, it twinkles like a ruby stone, promising thirst-quenching coolness. On the first sip, you will find roses and strawberries and a quaint echo from my childhood, Nerotri and Daphilo, rose cordial topped with iced water. At 13.5%, it's medium bodied, but tastes lighter because it is free of the brazing tannins one usually expects from Cypriot reds. Instead, this is a summer red. It is light enough to serve straight from the fridge. And when you live on an island like Cyprus, where summer lasts at least nine months, this is not a small point. As a pairing, I would suggest that Cypriot classic, pork souvlaki in a pita that is overstuffed with a tomato, cucumber, onion and parsley salad and crowd with a light drizzle of tahini sauce. This is an unfinished story. Vasiliadis Ekfrasis is a young winery that's looking to establish its identity. It is carried exclusively on the shoulders of a single man Christos Vasiliadis, and what defines Mr. Vasiliadis is his need for balance. He looks for balance in the terroir he is working with and in the wine he creates, and his mantra is simple, a good wine is a balanced wine. Having visited him and his winery and having tasted the wine, now finally the name of the winery makes sense. Ekphrasis is the Greek word for expressions. Each bottle he creates is an expression of the Trodos mountain range ear-popping altitude, low atmospheric pressure, temperature extremes, and the minerals, metals, and fossils of the ocean floor that one day reached for the sky. Του η σύσταση του εδαφού, η φεστόπετρα, ο φιόλιθο ο λεγόμενο, το οποίο ένιξε να το γνωρίζει, είναι μοναδικό χαρακτηριστικό να το παγκόσμιο το τρόπο.